Hello everyone, welcome to Easy Engineering Classes. We are continuing with the preparation series for Gate Computer Science, UGC Net Computer Science and Bank IT Officer exams. In this preparation series, we solve previous year questions that appeared in various computer science competitive exams to help you in your preparation for any of such exams. So in today's lecture, we'll take up two questions from the programming in C subject. So the first question is, the output of the following C program is and we are given two functions f1 and f2 and in the main function you are provided with the statements as int a equal to 4, b equal to 5, c equal to 6, f1 of a comma b is called then f2 with and b and and c that means the addresses of b and c are passed that means the variables or the parameters are passed by reference in this case and in f1 the parameters or the call is by value okay and the last statement is printf c minus a minus b all right so initially in the main the value of a is 4 the value of b is 5 and the value of c is 6 so when we make the call to f1 a and B is passed but since this is a call by value that means a copy of these variables is created in the function f1. So the original values of A and B are not affected. So whatever happens in f1 no matter what changes are made the final values would a of a and b would remain 4 and 5 okay so let's see what actually happens in f1 in f1 a new variable c is declared and c the local c is assigned the value of a a was 4 and b was 5 so this is 4 this is 5 c gets assigned to the value of a which is 4 a the value of a the copy and not the original a so a the copy of a is changed to the value of b so it it is assigned 5 and the copy of b is assigned the value of c which is 4 so all these changes are local to f1 and none of these changes are reflected back so the final values of the variables a b c of main are still 4, 5 and 6. Alright. Now this second call is called by reference. The addresses of the variables B and C are passed. Therefore in F2 when we say A and when we say B. Okay. So suppose uh, the initial address of B was thousand and the address of c was two thousand so in this f2 a would be assigned the address of b which is thousand and b here would be assigned the address of c which is two thousand all right so the changes here would be reflected back again a local variable c is defined c is assigned star of a now what does star of a means the value that is present at the address present at A. So the address present at A is 1000. So the value present at 1000 is 5. So C is assigned 5. Now star of A is assigned star of B. That means change the value that is present at address in A to the value that is present at the address in B b okay so first we find out star of b b is 2000 the value at 2000 is 6 okay so the value at address 1000 would be changed to 6 so the original b would be changed to 6 here and the last statement star of b equal to 6 star of b that means actual c the original c these are the original values b and c so c would now be changed to the original c which actually represents b here okay so this was okay this is a or it is original b original b that means the b 
B that is present in me and this is B which is actually original C. Okay, so don't get confused here. Now this B is assigning the value of 5. So when this function is completed and the control returns to main, the value of original B is changed to 6 and the value of original C is changed to 5. So in the printf statement, what is the value that is printed? C minus A minus B. Now C, A and B are these variables. So C, what is C? It is 5. A is 4 and B is 6. So the answer is 5 minus 4 is my 1. 1 minus 6 is minus 5. So minus 5 is the printed value. Okay. So again understand there are two calls. First is call by value. No matter what you do in F1, no changes would be reflected back in A and B. Okay. In F2, it is call by reference. Call by reference means changes would be reflected back in the variables B and C. Okay. And these variables B and C are named as A and B in this function. Okay. So that is how this question would work. Now coming to the second question which is again from GATE 2015. This question, previous question was also from GATE 2015 and the next question that we are going to solve is also from GATE 2015. So starting with this question, the question says that suppose you have an array named C and the C array ranges from C of 0, C of 1 to C of k minus 1. So the size of this array is k. Okay, it is an array of length k where all the entries are from the set 0, 1. So that means either the values in this array would be 0 or they would be 1. Okay, for any positive integer a and n consider the following pseudocode. So there is a function named do something which takes three parameters the array c, the integers a and n and there is an uh, there is a variable z which is initialized to 1. So for i equal to 0 to k minus 1, we have to do this. What we have to do? We assign value of z square mod n to z. Then if c of i is equal to 1, then we assign the value z into a mod n to z and at the end of the for loop we return z so this statement return z is out of the for loop okay so if k is equal to 4 c is equal to 1 0 1 1 a is 2 n is 8 then the output of do something c comma a comma n is all right so we have to find the output of this program when the C, original C array that is given to us is something like 1, 0, 1 and 1. The indices 0, 1, 2, 3. A, the value of variable A is 2. N is equal to 8. Okay. So, what happens is when we enter into this loop or when we enter into this function, the value of Z is initially 1. For I equal to 0, i is less than k minus 1. So what is k here? k is the length. Okay. So k is equal to 4. Since i is equal to 0 and it is less than k minus 1. That is it is less than 3. So what we do? We assign z square mod n to z. Therefore the value of z is changed to z square. That means 1 square. 1 square is 1 mod n. n is 8. So 1 mod 8 is equal to 1. So z gets this value as 1. If c of i is 1. Now i is 0. So c of 0 is 1. This condition is true. Therefore again the value of z is changed. And this value becomes z equal to z into a. a is 2. z was initially 1 in this uh, iteration. So 1 into 2 is 2. 2 mod n. n is 8. 2 mod 8. So this becomes 2. So the value of z is 2 here. 
Okay, after this iteration, the value of z is 2. Now, i is incremented. It is the value of i becomes 1. 1 is less than 3 or actually it is less than equal to 3. So, what we do, we assign this value of z square mod n to z. Now, what was z? z, the value is 2. So, 2 square mod 8 would be the new value of z. Okay. So, z is equal to 2 square mod 8. 2 square is 4. 4 mod 8 is 4. So, z becomes 4. Alright. Now, it says if c of 1, because i is 1, c of 1 is equal to 1. Is c of 1 equal to 1? No. Therefore, this statement, the then statement is not executed and this is the current value of z. Now, we come to the next iteration. i becomes 2. Do z square mod n equal to z. That means oh, assign the value of z square mod n to z again. So, z is assigned z square. z is 4. So, 4 square mod n. Mod 8. n is equal to 8. So, 4 square is 16. 16 mod 8 is 0. Because we are finding the remainder here. And z becomes 0. If c of i, i is 2, is c of 2 equal to 1? Yes, it is equal to 1. Then assign z the value of z into a mod n. But since z has become 0 here, 0 into 2 is 0 and 0 mod 8 is again 0. So, the value of z remains unchanged and this is the present value of z. Now, in the last iteration when i becomes 3, what we do? In this, we assign z square mod n to z z square z is 0 0 square mod n is again 0 so the value of z technically remains unchanged if c of 3 is 1 yes c of 3 is 1 so we again try to change the value of z but since z is 0 so it would again come out to be 0 Therefore, this is the last iteration of for loop and we return the value of z. Therefore, the output or the value that is printed is 0. So, that is how you will solve this question. That's all for today's lecture. I hope you understood both these questions. Please like the video if you understood the concepts behind both these questions and share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel of Easy Engineering Classes for more such tutorials in our preparation series as well as various lectures on other computer science subjects. Press the bell icon to get the notifications of up videos that we upload in future so that you don't miss any video. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Good luck for your exam.